Undocking confirmed. Endeavor begins its journey home with the Crew 11 crew. Undocking Dragon confirmed. SpaceX separation confirmed. Separation confirmed. A good undocking burn, 4.20 p.m. Central Time, 5.20 p.m. Eastern Time for undocking. About a 10 and a half hour journey to a splashdown off the coast of San Diego in the wee hours Thursday morning. We are at the right speed and altitude. The spacecraft velocity at Drogue Deploy is approximately 350 miles per hour and they did deploy at about 18,000 feet. You're getting a live look inside the cabin right now. That's Crew 11 preparing for their re-entry period. We will see deploy will be the main parachutes. There are four of those. They deploy at approximately 119 miles per hour. Or I should say when the spacecraft is traveling about 119 miles per hour. And they deploy at about 65,000 feet. And at Splashdown, Dragon is traveling approximately 16 miles per hour, which is a pretty good uh, deceleration for standing on Earth. This view is over the shoulder of Commander Zena Cardman and pilot Mike Fink of the Crew 11 spacecraft station. Since then, we completed the deorbit burn at 151. Yeah. Oh, and you're getting your first views of reentry. This is live, uh, and if you're in California, you can go see this with your own eyes. There we have visual confirmation of Drogue Deploy. Visual two healthy drogues. The spacecraft even further. So they deploy around 119 miles per hour and help, they'll decelerate it down to about 15, 16 miles per hour. And that Splashdown of Crew 11 after 100 and slashing down off the coast of California. That splashdown coming right on time at 2.41 a.m. Central Time. The SpaceX recovery ship and team has been waiting for Dragon splashdown and they will now- Cosmos Cosmonaut uh, Oleg Platonov who are inside that spacecraft that you see there. Now Dragon has autonomous, has already, oh, just, I would also like to point out we've got uh, some folks here approaching that will be done on a private channel. Great view here from the drone. This is our first look at the front side of Dragon Endeavor. I love this view because you can see um, the lights on on the inside. Uh, this crew member Um, we still have one re recovery team member um, working to apply the rigging to the capsule. You can see that work ongoing there. Um, as we've seen, this involved flu on crew one. Uh, she is the first female astronaut to fly in our, uh, in our Dragon spacecraft. So uh, we have this vessel named after her. I can say once uh, we make the final approach here to the uh, the Dragon spacecraft, the hoisting angle. We'll also see the recovery team member. I think you can still, yeah, you can still see them there on the front. Lifted, it'll be set on the nest and centered. It'll be oriented so the C uh, facing forward, that is Dragon's side hatch we were discussing. This is the same hatch they used to enter this Dragon. They are pulling it to the egress platform. It's a short distance and this view coming from that platform itself. This will align it properly with the side hatch where we will see the astronauts um, egress or exit the capsule. They will be assisted after being checked on by a medical doctor and this is standard uh, procedure for all of our returning crews.
Hey, there's your live view inside drive. Again, with this side hatch open, this is the first breath of fresh air that this crew has gotten in 167 days since their launch back in August. And it looks like our first crew member out of the spacecraft is NASA astronaut Mike Fink. The pilot of the Crew 11 mission aboard Dragon, Fink now being taken to those standard medical checks. That's NASA astronaut Zena Cardman wrapping up her first mission to space, commander of the Crew 11 spacecraft. Our next crew member to exit the spacecraft is JAXA, uh, JAXA's astronaut, Kimya Yui. Yui just reached the milestone of 300 days in space across two missions. You can see... And we see the fourth crew member of Crew 11 being helped from the vehicle now. That is Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Platinov, also wrapping up his first mission to space. Now that NASA astronauts Zena Cardman and Mike Fink, Kim Yui of JAXA, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Platinov are safely back home on Earth and getting checked out by the medical teams, we're going to wrap up our live coverage of their return. This cruise journey concludes following a launch on August 1st, 2025. We'll be taking questions through our phone bridge. So media. This is uh, this mission brought Crew 11 safely home. NASA astronauts Zena Cardman, Mike Fink, JAXA astronaut Kimye Yui, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Platonov are all safe and in good spirits. All crew members are currently undergoing the routine post splashdown medical evaluation. The crew member of concern is doing fine. We will share updates on their health as soon as it's appropriate to do so. Administrator for Space Operations, Mission Directorate. Uh, this crew was in space uh, just under 170 days. They performed uh, a little less than 900 hours of science experiments on board. Those are hands-on science experiments. Um, and that en uh, encompassed about 140 different experiments. They saw five spacecrafts arrive, three spacecraft depart. And the work we did on the International Space Station for this exposition, as well as others, benefits humanity on Earth. It benefits and teaches us for exploration for what we're going to use in the Artemis program as we go back to the moon and to Mars. And with that, we'll move into questions. Our first question comes from Bill Harwood with CBS News. I, as I mentioned in my, in my prepared remarks, uh, all crew members right now are uh, they're, they're safe, uh, they're in good spirits, they're going through the standard uh, post-splashdown medical checks. I believe uh, the helicopter, if it hasn't uh, left the recovery ship, it, it's imminent. Uh, to do so, and they're all going uh, to the hospital as we um, as we had determined days ago as the proper thing to do under the circumstances. But as I mentioned, the crew member uh, in question specifically is doing fine. We, we would expect that to be the plan, yes. Oftentimes, people associate that with what, what did we get wrong? Um, and for sure, in any circumstance, you're going to capture lessons learned and apply it. I think when we, we go through the debrief on this, we're going we're gonna to learn a lot about the things we got uh, really, we, we got right and, and did it very well and make sure we apply that, um, you know, in, in other applications going forward. So this, this, from my perspective, watching it play out from the time of the original situation developing to get our astronauts safely in the water and on their way to, to, to medical care was executed almost near flawlessly. 